Amen. So anything that I've found through the years that I've lived, anything that I've found to be fruitful in my life, and, and it's much more that I haven't that I haven't learned yet, but it, the things that I've found, I try to teach the people of God. Amen. I try to teach the people of God. Amen. Do you know that the percentage of people that are wealthy are very low? It's very low, like maybe one, one and a half percent of our whole society are, are considered rich. Amen. So so it's, it's out there for, for you taking. But God, God has given us a word here that's going to bless you. Now, when he talks about when he talks about this first of the first fruit, I want to tell you something. God is fulfilling a promise that he made to four parents. You don't know what your parents prayed for. Somebody might have walked by you when you was a baby and said, God bless this baby. Amen. Sometimes if we if we are already grown and we start getting these truths, sometimes all the activity of our mind will interfere with a movement of blessing. Did anybody hear that? Sometimes the activity, the way we've been trained, the way we've been taught, the way we're culturally designed, it stops us from moving forward in the things of God. Well, today I rebuke that demon. I decree in the name of Jesus that you will move forward in the blessings of God. Amen. 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 And amen. Um, the way you think is important. We, you know, that's why it's so important to have the mind of Christ. And I'm going to show you this. Verse 19 reads this way. It says, the first of the first fruits of your land thou shalt bring into the house of the Lord your God. Thou shalt not seed a kid in his mother's milk. Now, what he's saying is, he said, don't, they had a ritual that they did. Seeding means to boil a baby goat. And then because the baby is um, the baby is doesn't have anything, nothing is wrong with it. They boil it. Then they have the juice and they start putting it on everything, spraying it on everything, and doing these rituals. God said, don't do that anymore. Don't do that anymore. Don't don't do these rituals of, of things that are not of me. Amen. Now, remember, when God is talking to Israel, God is bringing them out of a place. Somebody need to come out of a place you've been stuck in for a long time. He's bringing them out of the wilderness. He had taken them out of Egypt, but he, but he allowed them to go into the wilderness. And the wilderness is a place of lack if you don't have God. Get that? See, God supplies our needs according to his riches and glory, but the wilderness, get this, now here this is, the wilderness is a place of lack. A place of lack. Can anybody hear that? The wilderness is a place where there is no hope for something. You don't see nothing. You don't see no stories. You don't see, you know, some people's lives are so isolated and they're going through so much that they can't even imagine having a good life. They can't even imagine uh, uh, um, uh, having the excitement of life and being able to live and function. They can't. It's, it's so out of mind for them. So the wilderness represents a place of, 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 of lack, a place where you can't even imagine. Uh, how can I how can I eat? How can I get me some water? How can I get me something to drink? How can I go out and have fun? How can I? You know, it's, it's a place where you can't even imagine. Some people are there right now. But God's desire is to bring you out. So when he was talking about this first of the first fruit, he's giving them instructions. He's saying, look, now the first thing that come here, I'm giving you do some, I'm getting ready to give you some promised land. Some fruitful promised land. Somebody need that. God is getting ready to give me some promised land. Who did he promise it to? He promised it to maybe your mother, maybe your father, maybe your grandmother, maybe your grandfather, maybe your great grand. Somebody. Pray to God for you. That's why you're here today. So you should have life and have it more abundantly. And that's not a joke, nor a hearsay or an imagination. It's real. See, you can overlook abundance of life when you can't imagine it. Or when it's hard to get there. But let me tell you something. It's very real. So somebody might have prayed for you a long time ago. You don't even know they prayed for you. And all of a sudden, now God is saying, hey, it's time that I bring you into a new place. Somebody, he's saying that you are here right now. He's talking to you right now. It's time for me to bring you into. You can't get there on your own. You have no idea what it takes. I don't need what you know to get you there. I need your obedience to what I say. Watch what he says in verse 20. He says, now, behold, pay attention. I send an angel before you. Watch this to keep you in the way that you don't know. In other words, when we start moving, my, my desire is to build. We, we went to a place yesterday with our grandchildren and, they had, and uh, it was oh, it was exactly what I wanted to build out here. And I started taking pictures. I was so excited. How God will always use somebody close to me to get me somewhere I don't know I need to go. So I started taking all these pictures. I was like, God, this is it. He said, this is it. See, see God sometimes will will take you places. But hear this, when he says this angel, the angel 
Everybody have ministry angels. The angels will lead the angel. This is a particular angel, but this is God's angel that he's assigned to you. He'll start leading you. Get this now to a prosperous life. But what's in you can resist it. Listen to me. How do I know the angel is leading me when he's taking me somewhere I've never gone before? When I'm experiencing challenges at another level that's intimidating to me. Anybody hear that? When I'm experiencing challenges that are intimidating to me. Watch what he said about this angel. He said, behold, I send an angel before you to keep you in the way. Watch this. And to bring you into the place which I have prepared. Not what you prepared. Which I have prepared. Anybody hear that? Get this now. So you know you don't know what it looks like. You don't know what it feels like. You don't have an idea. Get this. He said to bring you. I want you to hear this. Into a place which I prepared. Watch what he said before that. To keep you in the way of getting to that place. Now here's the thought. As I'm thinking about building this facility, it's bigger than me. I've never done it before at that level that I'm getting ready to do now. I don't know what I need to do. I got to trust God for every step of the way. Just like building this church. I never built a church before. But God took me through every step, but I had to stay in the way. Since it's easy to get out of the way because of fear, insecurity, doubt, and unbelief. Logically, logically, that don't make sense because I've never done that before. Godly, it makes sense because God is doing it. Please, God, help somebody. I don't, it don't, it don't make sense. So this is what's logical. Logical is the hope it's going to happen later. Or soon. Or one day. But God is ready now. He's ready now. So he, you didn't choose God to go. God chose you to go. It's bigger than you. It's bigger than me. So he'll be glorified. He'll be worshipped. He'll be praised. It's bigger than you. It's bigger than me. But can I get you to obey me? He said, he said, he said, this is what's gonna happen. When you bring the first of the first fruit, what I'm gonna do, he said, I'm going to, I'm gonna, I'm gonna sign an angel to you. And this angel, now you gotta be able to identify the angel. I told you, the angel gonna have you going before folk and, and that you don't know. He's going to put some favor on you that you don't understand. All you got to do is be obedient. Are you hearing me? He'll have you going before millionaires that you don't. And, 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 and you'll say, I, you know, I need investors. He'll have you going before the bank and you'll say, I need money. Somebody needs this. I need $15 million. I need. Well, what will happen is when you hear the word $15 million, maybe I don't need quite that much. So they start offering you six million. Six million ain't gonna do the job. So I can hear this guy. It won't do the job. Are you hearing me? So when I give this first of the first fruit, I'm headed in another. Not only am I headed there, but I'm breaking generational curses. I'm, I'm destroying boundaries and I'm destroying ceilings. I'm tearing some things up. Why? Because not only will I get there. But the next generation and the next generation and the next generation and the next generation will get there. Why? Because I believe God when he said, I want you to stay with this angel. He's leading you where you need to go. Now watch what he said in verse 21. Are you with me? He said, beware of him. Beware means you need to look out. You need to pay attention. You need to really focus on him because he's going to do some stuff you ain't used to. He's going to take you places you ain't you ain't used to go. He's going to have you before people you don't, you don't, you don't even know. He's going to have you thinking, he's going to have you doing stuff you don't think you can do. I remember I had a, I had a bill and I think they wanted, I, I needed to run a, 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 um, a line from across the street over to this side because I needed a meter. 
And they told me it's going to cost fifty some thousand, fifty some thousand dollars, I think it was, to do it. And, and it might not—I don't know how much it was, but it was close to that. And I said, I was like, "Oh God, mind, be mindful now. I'm in a place where I've never been before." So, but it didn't register in my spirit that it was the right, right thing. Can anybody hear me? So um, I got—I got to thinking about it. And I was over here in this office. That's when we was in this building. I was sitting in the office, and I was really wrestling with God. I said, God, what do I do? I said, that, "Now they, they want fifty thousand dollars to do." To do that, I didn't get an answer from God because it wasn't no agreement. So I sit there and I, I didn't get an answer that day. I went home and I, I was about to sign the contract. I didn't sign it that day. I went home and I sit there and I said, God, I said, what do we do? Somebody need this. Now the angel gonna need you, remember? But you gotta wrestle with God to find out what are you doing. You gotta stay with God. You gotta talk to God. Anybody listening? So I sit there and I got home and then when I got home, I kept talking. So I, I finally, he finally let me go to sleep. So I woke up in the morning. And as I was coming up here, he said, call the county to see do you need that. Anybody listening? So I called the county. They said to me, uh, let's come out there and look at it. They came out here and looked at it. Brought all the engineers. They said, well, Pastor, we don't think you need it on that side of the street. What we're going to do, we're going to put it right here on this side of the street. I said, oh. <laughs> they said we're gonna charge you twenty one hundred dollars to do it. Wait, wait, wait! But then they said we're gonna give you a grant for that, so you don't have to pay. We had even when we went to get the permits, they gave us. But if I had not listened to the angel, see, I had people that were around me that I could have sent to get the permits. Somebody need this, but God said you go, because I had had so many glitches. Because everybody around me had never done what we had done before. What we were doing now. So they didn't know any better, but they thought they knew because I asked them to do it, so they want to go at the forehead and mess it up. <laughs> so I go down to get these, and I want you to hear this. I go down to get them the permit. So we walk, and I had, a, I had back then I had Fuller with me, <laughs> um, Minister Fuller, Timothy Fuller, just for Shonda's old husband. No. <laughs> and uh, man, he was a, he was a foul ball. And we went in there, man, and he said, he was talking to me. He's like, Pastor, I just don't know, but I believe they're going to show you some favor. I just believe they're going to show you some favor. And I mean, he had an anointing on him, but he was different, though. And I said, okay, we're going to see you then. We're going to go up in here. So we went in there, and he was quiet. I was quiet. And, 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 and the guy that was over, he came out, and he said, hey, Pastor, I said, hey, man. <laughs> and I asked, I said, Fuller, dude, we're supposed to know him? And you know, I whisper stuff. He said, he said, he the one over the whole thing. I said, okay. That's what his name is. <laughs> So he, he came. He said, well, we, gonna, we made up our minds. We know you're out there trying to do something for the community. He said, we're going to give you a grant. We're going to give you a grant. Don. You don't have to pay it back. It's gonna be, and I said, well, this is going to be 10000 He said, yes, it's going to be 10000 He said, but you don't have to pay a thing. Over and over, the angel was leading me and messing me up. Because in my mind, I thought I would have to. But he said, no, I got you. But if I had never gone. If I had never gone, if I had never obeyed this angel, if I had never walked with this angel, I would never have gotten it. Anybody hearing me? He said, beware of him. And that word beware is very powerful. Beware means to be on alert. Pay attention. You know your angel when he's leading you. Get this now, this is important. When he's leading you into ways and places you've never gone. Having you doing stuff you've never done. You'll never get what you get what you want if it's different than where you are if you don't go somewhere else. You'll never get what you want if it's different than what you want if you don't go somewhere else. Because if you look around, sometimes what you got is what you got. So the angel going to pull you out of your comfort zone. Anybody with me? Now watch. He said, beware. He said, obey his voice. Provoke him not. Now how do you provoke the angel? By resisting the go. By trying to argue and debate Figuring that out. Now, of course, we're human. We're going to come short. But the thought is you got to find a place where you can settle down and you can really hear the voice of God without destruction. Without destruction. I didn't say destruction. I said without destruction. See, see, the voice of God in your, your thought patterns can be destroyed when it's trying to line up. The enemy literally comes to do what? Still killing what? Destroy. He destroys that pattern of thinking as you're moving with God in a place you've never gone and to experience something you've never had. He said, beware. 
obey his voice, provoke him not. He said he won't pardon you. In other words, see, sometimes you are the one that's chosen by God for God to do something mighty through for many. But if you can't hear the voice of God, God can't use you. If you don't oh, see, listen, if you don't, it's not that it can't be done. It means that where, wherever you got where you quit, it intimidated you. Wherever you gave up, it intimidated you. Timing and seasons are critical with God. Because, because see, there are so many factors that he had in place when we're building this. We had our electrician quit. He said, you ain't done enough money, I ain't going to do it. I said, okay, man. I said, okay, well, you're going to quit, right? He said, I'm quitting. I ain't going to be up here no more. I'm done. That's all right. He quit on us. Joe Murphy, who was over the permits, took the license for the Word of God Christian Ministry Church. He said, Pastor, I'm going to get under this license. I'm going to carry it for you until you finish the church. I said, Joe, what you gonna charge me? He said, I don't want. I can't charge it. Now God's been too good to me. I said, Joe, I gotta give you something. He said, Well, you can you pray for me. You pray for me. See, 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 see. This is the thing. When the electrician quit, I could have quit, but I couldn't quit because I got this angel telling me there's another way. Or somebody hear this guy. So he says, Look at verse 22. If you shall indeed obey his voice, hear this, and do all that I speak. I ran out of money when I was doing this. I ran out of money. We ran out of money. We ran out of money because I was building it bigger than what I was supposed to build and all that stuff. So we ran out of money. And so, so, um, it got extremely difficult. As a matter of fact, it brought me to tears. I walked in this building, it was empty, and the shell was up. And I I was in here by myself, and I and I had sent everybody home because I knew I could no longer pay. And I began to weep. I said, God, I said, you know, I, I counted up the cost, and you are the cost. This is you. I said, but God, if you don't want to do any more, just give me peace. Give me peace. God, I sent a man from the bank. Bank told me they weren't going to give me no more money because they didn't have enough numbers. This we're not gonna give you no more money, uh, Pastor. <laughs> I said, okay. I said, but I need some more money to get it finished. So he sent a man out. He was an engineer. He came out. He looked at it. And he realized that I had done way more than what we had agreed to do. He said, oh, I'm going right back and take this to them. He took it to them, and within a couple of days, we had we had the money. See, they had told me that they were not going to give it to me. We fasted. We came in. And we fasted. We walked this building. We fasted. They said we're not gonna win. So let me tell you what God did before he gave me the money. So I need this. Come bless you. God said, go ahead and hire the contractors. I'm going to pay them. I said, what? He said, go out and hire, hire your carpenter. Hire your, because all the interior had to be done. Hire your sheetrock men. Hire your ceiling men. Hire everybody you need. And I'm going to pay them. That angel again. Isn't that crazy? See, God don't, see, faith don't move by what you got. It moved by obedience to God. So I hired him. I got I tried to get the best one. Like I said, man, give me. I, I went, we went, we got folk in here, man, and they went to work. And this was before, get this, before I had gotten that check. <laughs> I hired them. By the time it was time to pay them, guess what was in the in the, in the account? The money to pay them. This is real. But see, see, this is this right here is real. You, you, have to, you have to take God as his word and watch him do miracles in your life. God is able. So he says, he says, obey his voice and do all that. So when God told me to hire these folk and they start moving, those boys, those, those boys came in here, they were moving so fast with this she rock. When we put this wall up, they were moving fast with that. When we ordered those floors, they were moving fast with that. I wasn't supposed to put the balcony in. I said, I'm putting the balcony. <laughs> I put the balcony on both sides. Why? Because this angel kept on saying, let's do it. God will provide. Somebody needed God. Somebody needed. See, you're stuck in a place where you don't belong anymore. You're not comfortable. It's a sad place. You're downtrodden. Every time you go in the house, you want to make some changes. 
Every time you get in your car, you want to make, every time you look at your family, you want to make some changes. You just want to make some changes, but you, you're afraid because you think you ain't got the money, but you got the faith. If you got the faith, the money will come. So he says, he says, verse 22, let me do this. But if thou shalt indeed obey his voice and do all that I speak, and boy, listen now, o- obey his voice, but he's speaking what I say. I will be an enemy under your enemies. Anything to try to stop you. I had people come up. I had many preachers to come up here. Some would say some crazy stuff. Just crazy, crazy son of a gun. Then I had some that were, I had this one old man, right, right when he got tight. When he got real tight, when my, when my faith was really on the, on the line, when I was shaking, I was really going through. I was like, God, you know, this woman brought her daddy up here. He, he couldn't drive no more. And I was standing on that side, but the walls went up. He came in and he said, uh, the Lord sent me to talk to you. I said, yes, sir. What did he, what did he want me to hear? He said, uh, he told me to tell you he's going to get it done. I wept like a baby. I knew it was from God. And I knew I needed that moment of encouragement. I literally wept. He, that man grabbed me and held me because he knew I would have fallen. I would have fallen if he hadn't grabbed me. Because the spirit of God was so powerful. I wish somebody could hear me. See, you got to stay with God. God can do it if you can just keep on going. Keep on hearing. Keep on obeying. He said, he said, I had some, I had some, I had some enemy. I had one lady when we went to zoning, she said, ain't there a pond on there? some water on the land. I said to my wife, there ain't no water on the land. There's water on the land. I went one day and I was out there walking. I went down deep in there. I said, this is what she was talking about. This is what she was talking about. And it, and it stays there for some reason. I don't know where that water can stay there. I don't think that even when it rains, it don't, it don't replenish itself. It doesn't go down. So it's, it was on the land. But, but then they, they didn't even, they didn't even address the issue. But when she was, she was, we had some people that were against it, but God said, I'll be an enemy of your enemies. You don't have to worry about your enemies. Don't, don't, you're supposed to love your enemies. Don't get caught up in who don't like it. You, let me tell you something. You'll be surprised at who you're. It's some envy hearted people around me. I mean, it is. I mean, even in here, it's some people that just can't. That's okay. They can't stand the movement of God. It's okay. It's, it's okay. But let me show you this now. He says, then I'll be an enemy of your enemy and, and an adversary unto your, unto your adversary. Look at verse 23. He said, for mine angel shall go before you and bring you into the Amorites. Now, these are the seven tribes, not tribes, I'm sorry, seven nations that were in the promised land. The seven nations that were in the promised land. He said, I'll bring you in unto the Amorites, the Hittites, the Perizzites, the Canaanites, the Jebusites, and the Hivites. Amen. This is what he says he's going to do. He said, I'm going to take you. Get this, guys. Hear this. Hear this now. Got to hear this. So I'm going to take you places where what, you, which, what I want you to have is. God always wants you to have more than you can ask or think. I'm taking you places. Get this now. Where what I want you to have. I'm taking you before people. Please hear this. Please. Because I, I, that's what this is another intimidating factor. You can say, I don't want nothing nobody got. This ain't your business. This is God's business. So I need to hear that. See, this ain't whether you want what they got or not. It's what God wants you to have. Please hear that. You don't ever get arrogant and say, oh, yeah, God gave me what was there. No, no, no. God is doing this for his glory so his people will have sources and resources. Amen. Amen. So in, in the book of Acts, chapter 13, verse 19 He's referencing, and this is Luke wrote this. He's referencing this. He says, this is chapter 13, verse 19. He says, and when he had destroyed seven nations in the land of Canaan, he distributed their land to them by allotments. See, see in other words, see, God will remove some stuff because of what you're supposed to have. Hallelujah. It's hard to hear. It's in Acts chapter 13, verse 19. He says, now, the seven nations in Canaan that God destroyed were from north to south, the Hivites. North of the Sea of Galilee, the Gerizites. Galilee region, Canaanites. The Canaanites was in the, in the western plain. The Amorites was in the eastern mountains. The Jebusites. So God and the Perizzites were in southwest and of Gaza. And the Hittites were, in the, were, were at the, near the Dead Sea. 
when the Lord your God brings you into the land which you go to possess and has cast out many nations before you, the Hittites and the Jerizzites, uh, the Gazites and the Amorites and the Canaanites and the Perizzites and the, Hitt- and the Hivites and the Jebusites, seven nations greater and mightier than you. You don't have to worry about their power. You don't have to worry about what people got. You don't need to be impressed with people. When God send you somewhere, he'll be your rear guard. He'll, he'll glorify you. The glorification of God is he's with you and everybody can see him but you. They know it's something about you that's special. Wow. Something about you that's different. Right. Get that. So that's in Deuteronomy 7 and 1. The scripture I just read to you. When the Lord your God brings you into the land which you go to possess and has cast out many nations before you, the Hittites, the Gergesites, the Amorites, the Canaanites, the Perizzites, the Hivites, the Jebusites, seven nations greater and mightier than you. In other words, God's going to do something that he wants done that will bring him glory from the world through your life. It's not about you. It's about God. Hear that. So when you talk about this first of the first fruit, of course, people got you don't have people anytime they talk about tithe, offering and giving. But let me tell you something, brothers and sisters, I'm done with this. If Lisa and I have not had not done the things that are required in the scripture, and, and I'm not boasting, I'm just giving you something that to help you. We couldn't see the life we see. We see a good life. Hear me by the Spirit of God. Um and I'm not talking about just the material. I'm talking about inside. You know, the peace, the weight, the wisdom to move, the joy to appreciate. See, see the Bible says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added to you. Hear me. You need to seek his voice. Now, this angel, you'll recognize the angel. I keep saying it because it's important. See, a lot of times people think that, that uh, you know, I can just, this is just going to happen to me. No, no, no. There's a condition. The condition is this angel, you got to do what he say. This, this angel is going to be leading you. Now, remember how he's going to lead you. He's going to lead you into places that God has for you that you never knew. What God is doing, he's answering prayers from those that pray. So they never told you they prayed for you to be very successful. They never told you. Some of them you never even met. They left before you before you had a chance to meet them. But God is a promise keeper. He's a promise keeper. When my body goes through different changes, I said, God, will you take this out of my family? I pray over my children, over my grandchildren. Whatever my wife goes through, I said, God, take this out of us and take this out of our family. Why? Because he said in his word. That I'm the God that heals you. Wherever there's poverty or sickness, I said, God, will you take this out of our wherever there's disorder and disease of mind, I said, God, will you please take this out of our family? I'm seeing him do it. Can you hear that? He's able to do it. But you gotta trust him. So when I release, or when you release your first of the first fruit, I want you to stand on these scriptures. But as you stand on these scriptures, your life is going to begin to take you in another direction. There are people who've had dreams for a long time. You had ideas, and, and, and there you see your children doing things, but, but God ain't through with you yet. God can still, glory to God, God can still bring it to pass. The question is, can you believe him? If you can believe him, say, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Somebody missed that? I'll do it again for you. God can still bring it to pass. He still, in your life, he can bring it. See, it's important that he brings it to pass in your life so those behind you won't have to struggle. You got to struggle with it. You got to fight. You can get there. But it's still possible today that he can bring it in your life. If you believe, say, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord.